And this is one of the biggest problems in BDO. I want to make a video about this and talk about this. But right now, I'm just going to address it a little bit. What's going on? Welcome back to Putman Gaming. Today, we're going to be doing a reaction video. I want to try to do some different types of content on the channel just to be able to produce more content. So one of the things I'm going to be doing is reaction videos. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is like Reddit posts and just discussion. You know, instead of just all gameplay, maybe have some more discussion on the game in general. So this is a video by Waydot. It's a Black Desert 2024 uh, review. Looks like he played for 100 hours. I just want to watch the video, give my thoughts on it, and, uh, you know, let's have a discussion in the comment section. And let's get straight to this video. Desert Online is a buy-to-play sandbox, kind of, action combat MMORPG developed by the Korean company Pearl Abyss. It's available on PC. The number one combat creator in the industry. Black Desert features an active combat system that requires aiming, dodging, combos, mounting. Yes, beautiful combat system. More games need to create their combat system like PAs. Traveling around the world, gathering, processing, sailing, breeding. If you can think of it, it's probably an activity. Hey, for real, there's so much to do. Heard that BDO is an absolute pay to win grind fest filled with horrible RNG systems that provides unrewarding gameplay. But now, yeah, that's not true. With this game, I don't think you should always take the first thing you hear as fact. Sure, yep, some of those so systems true. exist in the game, but there. I'm glad that somebody is actually making a positive review on the game and discussing the fact that BDO is not pay to win anymore. Like a lot of people think that it's pay to win, but just the recent events that we've had they've given us book the old moon for free comma sylvia blessing for free value packs for free they throw so much free stuff at the free-to-play community it's ridiculous there is so much more to bdo the game is absolutely massive and as someone who makes new player videos on mmos bdo has been by far my biggest undertaking in terms oh, of just I'm sure. understanding the game, what you can all get into, the best and worst of it, and then somehow trying to find a way to condense that down into a digestible video <laughs> format. My Welcome to the to life of a content of creator in BDO. And being overwhelmed at the sheer size and the amount of systems and information that's required to really get into this game. And you're going to notice that. Which is something that PA definitely needs to work on. Simplifying access to the game, making it easier for new players to get in, get playing, and get their account on the right track without being jumbled with items, jumbled with junk. Like we need some compression, some compaction, and just continuing to improve the the beginner, uh, you know, process. That in some of my clips, because of the size and the scope of the game, I won't be able to truly get into every single aspect as I like to do with some MMOs. And for that, you'll have to forgive me. However, I can say with some confidence that if you guys enjoy this video, there will be more Black Desert in the future. Hey, that being let's said, go. if you guys have been enjoying any of my MMO content, I would just like to quickly mention that channel memberships are now active on this channel. You can get yourself some cool emotes and badges for the comments. Hey, if you don't know who this dude is, make sure you go over there, subscribe to his channel, check out his videos. Looks like a good uh, content creator. And you can also support me in creating these videos, which take a lot of time and effort. I oh, I know they do. But let's jump into Black Desert Online and find yeah, out let's get it. you give this game a try as a new player in the year 2024. Yo. From the very first moment that you interact with this game, you're met with a feeling of graphical brilliance. No, seriously, this game is beautiful inside and out. And you even see that here in the intro scene before you even get to your character select. Some of the Asian developed MMOs that I've been playing recently have really been blowing my mind in terms of graphics and visual design. Yeah, While they're so good. Decent performance. It really makes me question why some of the more Western developed games with honestly subpar graphics are optimized so poorly. Now, BDO does new characters because in they a very just don't do it like the Asian the game community. You to start your adventure the Asian community on a can make some server. sick These games. Are I'm telling you, because they were limited especially time Koreans. Servers. However, they recently changed this so that the seasonal server is always active. It's yeah, perfect. that's a really Basically, nice change. Basically, you get massively boosted XP rates, access to powerful armor, PvP is turned off, and access to a seasonal pass, and all sorts of other benefits in order for you to create a new character. Well, you can go to the, the PvP server. Uh, there is a season PvP server that you can go to and PvP on there. It's actually pretty fun. 
because once you hit like cap on gear um the only thing that's really going to hurt you is veteran players going in there and playing with like a super uh giga chad crystal setup then you then you're going to get beat in a reasonable amount of time bdo is definitely a grind fest and this game can take an absurd amount of time for meaningful amounts of progress so this was pearl abyss's attempt at fixing the dawn Launching feeling of new player onboarding. At some point in the future, you're going to take your new character and graduate from a seasonal server, moving over to a normal server. Anyhow, into character creation, I was already overwhelmed. And as I was soon to find out, that would be the theme for my entire time playing Black Desert. With over 27 different classes to choose from, most of them having extremely unique names which made no correlation to any classes that I had played in previous games, I spent quite a while here trying to decide what sounded best. The most recent addition to the game in terms of classes is the Scholar class. However, the classes are gender locked and Scholar was a female. I generally prefer to play male characters in my MMOs. I don't really like gender locking usually, but each class in BDO is more of a character in this game with their own story and personality. So I guess it makes sense. But seriously, there are so many unique sounding classes in here. Wusa, Megu, Shai, Tamer, Nova. I wish I had the time to try them all. You get a quick class preview in the bottom right corner, as well as a description and some stats. So far, the class that was really starting to stand out and look the most interesting to me was the Sage. A high mobility caster with long cooldowns sounded pretty interesting. I spent way too much time in character customization. There's about 30 billion options to choose from in terms of designing your character to look exactly how you would like. And I especially had fun playing with the facial expressions, which little to my knowledge at the time would be how your character's face looks permanently whenever you're idling. <laughs> awesome. Waydot the Sage was created and after a couple of quick graphical settings, we were into the tutorial. Man, these graphics are nuts. This game is actually beautiful. The game runs you through some basic controls and you're thrust into combat against a couple of assassins. You wake up this gargantuan ancient desert robot and follow with more beautiful cutscenes along the way. I can imagine in a lot of games they have these absolutely stunning intros in order to get players hooked into the game. But if BDO manages to keep up even half of this level of visual brilliance throughout the rest of my playthrough, I'll be pretty impressed. Moving through the tutorial, you're introduced to some of your abilities. Now, at this point in time, you don't actually have your quick slot action bar, which you'll get in just a short while. But you are presented with an infographic on your screen that tells you all of the different button combinations. Yeah, well, in BDO, you don't have a quick slot moves. action bar. It sort like, of reminds me of a you fighting have it, but game it's like more... Dragon Ball Z or Tekken, where pressing a combination of buttons... It's more used for, like, items and stuff like that. You're not just going to sit there and be like... Oh, well, I'm going to put all my skills in my quick slot bar. You know, this is more of like a fighting game. Results in different abilities. This is actually a super unique take on combat that I haven't really seen much in the MMO space. It's like action combat, but it includes fighting game mechanics. Yeah, that's, that's why it's so good. After and finishing so the tutorial, you're given a couple of different options in terms of starting zones. There's Land of the Morning Light, the Mountain of Eternal Winter, and the Ancient Stone Chamber. The Stone Chamber said it was recommended for new players, so who am I to argue? I woke up in a sort of ruinous mining expedition, and I was introduced to the Black Spirit. This dude is basically your ever-present guide throughout the game. You're going to be able to accept story quests, enhance your gear, claim rewards, and do all sorts of different functions through using yeah, he's a dick. Spirit. As you can see, I now have my quick slot action bar at the bottom his of the enhancements. screen, so I can just use my spells from there, or I can use the combination buttons that I was using prior. Don't I guess be it's a just scrub. a few different options use the depending combos. on how you prefer to play the game. In the beginning, I was using the actual combinations quite often, but as I played more and more, and I got lazier and lazier, I tended to just use my abilities from my action bar. I took a minute here to explore the user interface, which is... Well, the thing about using your skills from the action bar is you don't get the full effect. Like, you have better cooldowns if you use the combos on the keyboard. Somewhat clean, but it's also fairly cluttered. There's a lot of clickable menus in a lot of different places. For example, up here, over here, down here... And that's just a fraction of the actual usable interfaces that exist in the game. It's pretty standard for Eastern-made MMOs to have an absolutely massive amount of systems and interfaces to interact with. So I wasn't really surprised. Yeah, I One agree. thing I should mention, however, is that the interface is entirely and completely customizable. 
No, seriously, Which you can move sick. everything and anything to where you would like a it. Great For function. me, I just left most things where they were because I didn't want to confuse myself too early on. All right. Well, let's get into this. I started doing some of the intro quests that I was given. There's a path pointing you directly to where you need to go at all times. I noticed I was already level 6. I'm not sure when that happened. Also, hmm, speaking yeah, of you level what up is really the max fast level in BDO. In this game? Oh, there is no max level really. However, there are a nope. couple of soft caps. Soft cap. Apparently, at level 56, you will receive a huge upgrade that changes how your account plays. And you will find leveling significantly slower, much slower, all the way up to level Not 60, really, if you know how to play the game. Upon which you will once again hit another soft cap, where leveling will once again become significantly slower. Apparently, the highest level player in the game is 67. At some point past level 63, it starts to take ridiculous... 64 is like when it really gets hard like if you enjoy a class and you really play a class for a while you're gonna hit 64 pretty easily it's not that crazy amounts of playing to you just need levels. gear you need People to understand literally progression. spend years playing this game in order to just get one level at a certain point so for all extensive purposes people generally consider between 60 to if 62 you're really bad at bdo then yeah level. within a few minutes of playing i quickly realized that by pressing up easy. t my character would just automatically run to wherever my quest location or marker <laughs> was. You can just auto run. <laughs> Newbie I wasn't games. entirely sure how to feel about that at the beginning of the game. I'm not going to lie. It kind of gave me the wrong vibe as it felt sort Why, of cheap bro? and gimmicky you... in a mobile gaming sort of sense. No, but now that I have many, all. many more hours in the game, even with the currently existing fast travel systems, you spend a lot of time traveling. Exactly. Why that auto run massive. feature is nice. So this auto run feature was used nonstop by me. And if I'm being completely honest, it didn't take anything away from the game for me personally. However, at first, it definitely gave me a bit of the wrong impression. Bruh, Within probably so 20 minutes slow. of playtime, I was already level 10. The leveling was exceptionally fast. I've these completely levels, forgot. The game was slowly teaching me about some of my abilities. I've completely forgotten about like the beginning of the game. I've actually really been thinking about like starting over on like a brand new account, but I just don't know if I want to go through the trouble of it. These combos where essentially if you use one ability and another one right after, it'll actually change the effect of the second ability, allowing for a lot more different ways to play the game by making each ability interact and have combos with yeah, others. Yeah, that's the thing combat about BDO's combat, me, to say the least. The more one you learn about like it, the better you get, that BDO the greater it is. systems all look vaguely familiar or similar or reminiscent to a lot of other systems in a lot of other games which led me to a sort of false sense of confidence where I felt like I understood and knew a lot of the systems that I was interacting with, but they are much deeper than that. For example, the skill point system kind of looks like a talent tree from other games, but it doesn't necessarily interact with BDO the same way. I constantly found myself thinking that I knew how something worked, only to be Googling it 10 minutes later. <laughs> and, oh my god... Googling for Black Desert is a nightmare. Certain games have just a plethora of information online. For example, Old School RuneScape is a shining pillar in the MMO space of what third-party information websites should strive to be with the Old School RuneScape wiki. Now, there are some resources that I found exceptionally helpful while playing BDO. These include Black Desert Foundry, as oh, well yeah. as another fellow YouTuber BDO named nice. Evil Do Us Harm who makes excellent guides. I'll yeah, leave links to both of those in the description. But Googling info for BDO is ridiculously challenging. I had so many unique problems during my time playing that for some reason no one online really had answers for. Some random Reddit thread might pop up from four years ago, but it turns out that that system was updated three years ago and now it works in a completely There's different way. This is kind of a hard right thing there, to homie. explain to someone who hasn't really tried the game, but trust me, if you play BDO and you run into a problem that you want to Google, I would say you only have about a 50% chance of finding somebody else who had the same problem and another 25% chance for I guess, their solution. I you know, after playing the game for so long, it's just so anyway, easy to moving me on. I started to, to get understand. some items which Most increased games the amount are. of space that I could have in my inventory. I was quite surprised at how much space was potentially available. Not only do you have a maximum amount of space in your inventory, but you also have a maximum amount of weight that you can carry. If you exceed yeah. that weight, your character is slowed down immensely. These are obviously two mechanics in which you can purchase your way out of dealing with these through the pearl shop. And we'll get into more on that later. Yeah, but I mean, you can get I've loyalty weight. Is considered pretty you can get weight from your skill so points. So far, it hasn't been much of a problem, but 
I'll make sure to let you guys know as we continue if anything crops up. Now, something else that I was beginning to notice is that even though I was equipping new pieces of gear and armor, my character's appearance was relatively unchanged. And this would basically be the case throughout my entire playthrough. Even when I got to a yeah, point you where gotta I buy outfits from the market items, they really didn't fundamentally change the look of my character's equipment. Yeah. All it was the mostly basic just different color schemes. Armor and in my stuff opinion, is this just is a massive kind of blast opportunity. As one of the best ways I mean, for that's one of the selling points for the game is through newer and better and stronger looking armor. You'll find throughout many storylines and quests throughout the game that you're given a choice between two options. This can dictate the way the story plays and what quests you get. Although, I don't believe it really has an effect on what rewards you might receive. Yeah, the story in like BDO is just, just kind of nice, eh. flavorful touch. They're trying to the revamp it now, but... A little bit more. Around level 12 was the first we'll time that I happens. interacted with the processing page. Basically, all of your skills and what you can create are available from this one page. From alchemy to smithing to woodworking sort of life skills, you will find everything here. I heated up and cooked some wolf meat as my introduction to this system. Earlier... You well, that's just really basic life skilling. There's so much more to life skilling that this dude has not figured out yet. Life skilling has, you know, a ton of advantages, and it's also very, very intricate with a lot of different ways you can go. So maybe we'll you see which way he takes BDO in the video. Is a sandbox style of game. It's not a true sandbox game by any means, but it's pretty damn close considering this is an MMO. The life skills and processing part of the game, which is for some people the only reason they play BDO, is massive, and there's yeah. so much to go into. I fear just in my first impressions video, I won't be able to touch on each and every life skill. Some of them nope, have their lengthy quest lines with their own equipment and progression paths. But it's safe to say if you consider yourself a skiller or a crafter in a lot of other MMOs, Great game to do I think in. BDO might definitely be a game that you would be interested in. Afterwards, yeah, I took a look around the world map for the first amazing. time, and as with most things in BDO, I was pretty impressed with its visual design. It's easy to understand, displays plenty of info you might need regarding monsters and different areas to grind in, as well as cities and, later on, potential fast travel info that you might need. If you take a look around, you'll see different cities and areas that are considered nodes, and you can actually hire workers to gather and farm in particular nodes so you can make money or farm items that you might use in yep. crafting. And you can do all of this passively. That the passive map has a nice filter and search AFK function, and Monday. overall it just looks fantastic. I was excited to really begin to open it up and see the rest of the world. Yeah, I got that's into my first really sort fun of boss fight. About BDO when you first start is like the world exploration. Just exploring the world, even now as a veteran player, as I've branched off into different life skills, learning where like truffle mushrooms were, you know? They're like finding new life skill spots where I can go gather stuff and just the the search and the the gathering and the grasping of new items and you know just that good exploration feeling. That's what MMO players love, you know. Even when you go to fight bosses in a new area or fight mobs in a new area, you know that exploration, that that just dopamine hit that you get, if you will, through the main story quest red nose and i have to say watching this back the combat is so much slower in the early parts of the game this yeah, boss took really me is. forever to finally get him down when your class is just starting out you're missing a lot like more than 80 percent of your core abilities and things that you have by the end of your leveling process so it plays a lot slower in the start but don't worry it definitely begins to ramp up pretty quickly i made it to the first town and met an npc named hans what is this, RuneScape? Once again, and I'm sorry, but I just have to mention again how graphically beautiful this game is. Yeah, and I'm you're sorry, just in Belly, It homie. feels good to play an MMO that looks this good. It gives yeah. you a sense of trust in the game that if they can design it to be so visually compelling, well, then it only makes sense that the gameplay and systems would follow suit. That's the idea, anyway. I was introduced to the pet system, just one pet to start out hmm, they can actually pet. loot items off the ground for you which is super handy and later on you can have up to five pets with you at a which time which is to speed really up really important process. for BDO. after that i was asked to choose a family name a family is obviously a group of your alternate characters and by them being in a family there's certain cross family rewards that your alts in the future can benefit from that's always a win in my book. Super handy, as it often Way sucks having to do the same monotonous task hmm. time and time again on multiple characters. I had this season pass pop up, and I immediately assumed, oh, battle pass mechanics. I'll probably be ignoring this. 
However, I was quite no. wrong in my assumption, as this Battle Pass has a free and paid version, and the free version actually is amazing. so, so handy when upgrading your seasonal character's gear. Now, another thing you'll notice when you start Black Desert is that you are receiving an absolutely constant stream of updates from what other characters are attempting to do on your server. Whether that's upgrading gear or PvP related things or boss fights, there's just a constant banner that's always playing these in-game updates. Yeah. It didn't really bother me and I didn't really notice it at the start, but I soon became quite off. annoyed with it. Luckily, it's toggleable in the settings and you can adjust what you actually want to receive alerts for. However, I gotta say, I feel like this should just be turned off by default. Also, while combat in this game feels very fluid and immersive, I will admit that movement can sometimes feel pretty janky. Your character will yeah, fall when no you want climbing, to jump or make wide turns. There's when you no want them gliding. To be sharp, or in this case, you know, ladders. BDO has the slowest ladder climbing I've ever experienced yeah, in the game. Traversal. I ended up dying for the very first time when facing this boss. Death can actually reduce your experience in BDO. And yep. usually it will send you to the closest safe area. However, as long as you are below level 20, you get free resurrections wherever you are. Later mm -hmm. on, you can use items to instant res as well as to stifle the experience. Getting trigger. done up by I that boss. I finally got myself some new looking armor. Like I said, it's fundamentally the same, but the color scheme has changed. And I also got access to my first mount. Mounts are really, really interesting. Yeah, in Black mounts Desert. are sick Not in BDO. only do they have their own level, but depending on where Although you are, Although I will map, say we need some need more. To transport them to get them closer. Some different mounts. You can also participate in horses, mounted like, combat. Use your I mean, mount. You got elephants storage, and stuff that you can ride. And just in, riding uh, your mount guild, trains uh, one of your guild life wars, skills. but training. It'd be nice to have like a different everything in Black Desert type of mount, like foxes or wolf mounts. You know, that'd be sick. Like riding a wolf around in BDO. What? And it was all a little much for me at the start. If I'm being completely honest, and then but we need flying now, mounts. There's pretty just... awesome. Believe it or not, in I only guess you about got three hours Peggy, though, of gameplay so lie. far, I was level 20. The only thing I was really doing is following the main story quest line. Yeah, I mean that's all you got to do. It really shouldn't giving. take you that long. Because I generally learn games best by just playing them and then later doing research if I have any specific questions. Exactly. As a seasonal character, you get an absolutely ridiculous amount of rewards and free things yep. while you're playing. So Here, good. I was given a bunch of gold bars which you can exchange for Oh, he's for about silver. to get his horse show. It's over 25 million worth, which is nothing Ooh, in the grand scheme of things. Big rat, really 25 mil. You're also given access to a Dream Mount, a tier yes. nine mount. I chose Doom Yo, because good he was fiery one. and edgy and looked cool. But apparently, it's the fastest of the Dream Mounts that you can actually choose from. After some more questing, I got myself to level twenty-five, right and I came across a boss that you get was a little so bit much too good tough stuff for, free. for me, or so my Black Spirit thought. And because Run, of that, fool. I decided to grind on some of the monsters in the area for a while. Now, Black Desert does this a lot differently than a lot of other games I've seen. Oh, he made it a work camp. Essentially, there are grind locations all throughout the map that mm. show the recommended stats and level for mm. a specific He's area. Horrible as at well combat. as the loot and whatever else you might want to acquire Shift or left grind mouse button, bro. Grinding in BDO there you go. Means Look, how did I... these areas. And I called it. I'm just too good at BDO. Thousands upon thousands hey, that's upon a dope skill, though, right there. Monsters. I'm not going to lie. Sage I ended up grinding in this specific sick. area to level 31, which took almost no time at all. But as you'll find out later in my gameplay, I ended up killing about 30,000 monsters in nice. one area in one afternoon just to gain one level. At this point in my well, playthrough, you were grinding it was the first in the wrong time that I interacted zone, with the gear enhancement system. On a seasonal character, you are given a full set of armor and accessories. Don't do it. Don't armor. enhance accessories that are This armor can that are only Naru. be used while your character is still on the seasonal servers. Using resources that you're going to get from questing and grinding, you're going to want to upgrade these from level 1 to 15. And then after they're level 15, you're going to start homie. upgrading oh, no. them from pre to duo to tri to tet, and finally pen. Once you hit duo, you run the risk of actually downgrading your armor every time you try to upgrade it. Once your Naru gear is fully upgraded to pen, you can then convert it into Tuvala gear, which you will once again upgrade all the way to pen. And eventually, when you graduate from the seasonal servers, you can exchange this armor and these... This is one thing that I do think they should change. I think they should just get rid of Naru completely. It should be wiped from the game. They just need to give you Tuvala as soon as you start. You know, get rid of the, the little beginning story bullcrap to where... You're stuck and you got to go through Naru and you get Naru accessories and then all the issues. It's just pointless. Just give new players 
Tuvala, at Pry, it's fine. Because they're going to spend hundreds of hours on mid game and then you get into early end game and now you have like super end game stuff that's like a thousand hours i mean come on why are we wasting new players time let them get in the game and, and enjoy it Tet boss weapon armor and accessories that you can use in the normal servers now if you're a brand new player and what i said doesn't make any sense to you and doesn't mm -hmm. even sound like english don't feel bad at yeah. all because in the clip that you're watching right now I felt the exact same way. To Wasting put it into simple terms, time. you're going to get seasonal armor that through the enhancement system, you can upgrade to full-on endgame armor that you can take with you once you're ready to graduate your character. Get rid of Naru. I've heard awful things about BDO's gear progression system. Oh my and trust gosh, me, is he using Cronstones? Of insanely low chance no! RNG situations that are bound to make you angry and take hundreds of hours of time and grinding to oh. even fire the resources to attempt in the first place. Uh, you but never use cron stones on Tuvala, dude. I it's so easy to enhance. For some reason, I had always heard that when you fail to upgrade in BDO, your armor gets destroyed. This isn't really the case. Your accessories, yes, you have a chance to lose those, but your armor and weapons will never fully be lost if you fail to upgrade them. So it's a bit of a silver lining, but we'll get into more on that later. Man, he just Back burnt so much I've been receiving silver, tons dude. Of new like, as bad as once how many crons do you have? Require the 186 that ain't that bad but, but still i mean if you buy them from vendor that's three mil a piece that's almost a billion silver that he's just throwing out dude it's not as bad as i originally thought for some reason i had always heard that when you never mind to never mind 300 video, million armor excuse gets me destroyed this isn't really the three four hundred mil at this point i was tired and overwhelmed and i felt stupid because, as I said, BDO just has so many systems and so much to dive into. Poor and I guy. recommend to any new players to learn from my Yeah, mistake. it really does. Do you know, they try need to and learn everything more. at once and try to understand everything. You're going to fail at that. Just pick a quest, enjoy the game for what it is at the start, and then as you run into questions and things, do some research then. All right, starting day two. I was looking disheveled, but trust me, that's because I slept like a rock. And I was ready to continue. I made it to Calfian. My first real time hey, he's about to turn up today. BDO. It's everything you would expect, every NPC you can imagine, plenty of other players roaming around doing their thing, and overall, it was a really cool, immersive looking place. Yeah, I continued Calfion's questing and dope. continued upgrading my gear. I stopped when I only had a 90% chance of upgrading because I falsely was still under the impression that my gear might be destroyed if I failed. That's the problem of hearing things about games before you try to play yeah, them. Yeah, there's and no chance of destruction and it will tell you if there's a chance it for it to break. wouldn't let me progress to 50. You have to complete this oddly placed quest in order to actually get to level Yeah, 50. this is something else that they about need to get rid time, of. Just let us level to 56. It doesn't matter. Why do you have to do some stupid quest at level 50 that's been there since 2016? But the reason for this is because at level 50 on a normal server is when PvP becomes active. So some characters might yeah. want to stay at level 49 for true, particular true. reasons while they finish specific quests or tasks before activating PvP. After level 50, I must say it definitely felt like my experience was slowing down. And then I was introduced to the Magnus questline, which gives you no experience, by the way. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, <laughs> I hated everything. Yeah, this, this is definitely Looking something else I need moment, to revamp. Now, it's actually essential, really. The Magnus questline is so garbage. To do and complete the Magnus questline. But, but as I had been leveling and fighting you do get a piece of pen armor. World, I was beginning to develop a rhythm and a cadence of you gameplay. You get the storage. Really enjoying. You know, universal and storage. The Magnus questline throws a giant wrench into that feeling of progression. As a new player, I didn't understand the importance of the Magnus or why I was doing this or even what it was. Let me explain. The Magnus takes place on an entirely different world. So even your user interface options change when you're in the Magnus. You can't look at the world map because you're in a different world. You can't access your normal armor or inventory. It's like an entirely separate dimension. The Magnus questline has 100 separate quests inside of it. 100. But the yeah. rewards are well, well worth it. The problem for me is that I didn't know what the rewards were at the time. And the Magnus questline is rather tedious. It constantly has Very you stuck tedious. in animations as you go from place to place where, well, you'll be solving puzzles. So, a man so, had to take his hoodie so off in the Magnus. He's and like, and participating in boss fights. Go off but here. mostly just puzzles. 
And I like when that you puzzle. think you're almost done, you're cool. not. Teleporters and abyssal pearls and shooty cannons and wizards that go through gates. What the I feel like we need more of this in BDO, like dungeons where you do puzzles, get cool rewards, you know, maybe like a guaranteed enhancement item or something, you know, a guaranteed tet, uh, do the dungeon so many times, but it needs to be solo playable too, and it needs to scale to where it's like, okay, you can bring in one person, you can bring in two people, you can bring in three people, you can bring in four people, you can bring in five people. It shouldn't be just like the new dungeons or the, well, they're not new now, but uh, the dungeons where you have to have a party of five. What the hell it's happened so to my questing and progression? I was flying through levels and now I'm stuck playing Zelda. It was very jarring as a new player who didn't fully understand why I was there. The Magnus questline essentially has you opening portals throughout the world, which grants you access to a fast travel system that which using is amazing. just silver allows you to get around the world so much quicker, which is huge because traveling can take a very long time in BDO. You end the Magnus questline with a boss fight, which I tried to do on hard mode, but failed <laughs> immensely. And afterwards, it even gives you access to one piece of pen, boss oh, which, one did he which you'll be able to use once you graduate your character. To put into perspective how long the Magnus questline actually took, I had doubled my playtime from the time I started the questline to the time I finished. Granted, my playtime had only been between six to eight hours at that point, and I probably could have done it a lot yeah. faster if I followed a guide for most of the puzzles, but I just figured them out on my own. And here's where hindsight is 2020. It was actually kind of fun. Yep. But at the time, I felt like it was stifling my progression, and I didn't understand why. That's why I, was I said we need more BDO stuff like this in the game a bit of a that you can just go in and do. Of explaining to new players why they should participate. Why not have like a randomly um, created dungeon that you can go into, and it changes, you know, formats, kind of like how Wayfinder does, but just take that and insert it in the game. I really feel like we need more dungeon crawling content that's soloable and it's co-op as well in the magnus quest line anyways after finishing with the magnus i was level 52 i had access to fast Let's go. and i was ready to continue quest Rats, and you got a plan piece of armor levels. at this point the main storyline is mostly finished up and so quests that grant experience are gate kept behind further levels you can check your quest log to see recommended quests. Some of the quests will give you things like further advancement to your inventory space, and I decided to go knock out some of those. Which is One of nice. them had me try fishing. Oh my god, fishing. First of all, I think there was some event going on as there was a ton of players yeah, fishing. Yeah, this is an AFK location. activity. But let me explain fishing a bit to you guys. First of all, you can do this activity AFK. That mm -hmm. means you drop your lure in, and whenever you get a bite... After three minutes, your character will automatically reel in that fish. This was really not good something that I originally knew especially with existed. Events. The only fishing that I thought you could do is known as active fishing. And it's fucking ridiculous. Essentially, oh, a my fish boy bites struggled. Your lure, and you have to precisely time your space uh. at the precise right moment in order to catch the fish. I thought to myself, hey, that's pretty annoying, and it's also kind of difficult, but I figured, you know, once I press my space bar at the right time, I'll catch a fish, right? Wrong. <laughs> Once you press your space bar at the right Yo, time, they you got enter him. phase two of the catching a single yep. fish boss fight, where you have to play Guitar Hero with your WASD keys, <laughs> and you have to do this seriously <laughs> fast. Oh, look at that Otherwise, expression. Otherwise, you don't catch the fish. Uh, I failed not once, not twice, but three times before I finally content, caught content, though, man. It's good content. Learning this stuff now. Let's see bottle. his expression. It's actually kind of a useful item, but still. I was floored at how difficult active fishing was, so I quickly moved on my way. Oh. Some more grinding and questing later, and Life I finally achieved Life skill is nice, though, in 2024, I'm telling which you. Which is a pretty defining moment for your character in BDO. You see, this unlocks hey, the succession let's go. and awakening quest line. Every class has access to this quest line, though it's different for I wonder each if class. he's going to choose to play Awakening. Essentially, after you complete this quest line, you're given Sage access awakening to a new is weapon so and a plethora sick. of new abilities. Afterwards, you can switch between these weapons using your old normal weapon, which would allow you to use all of your abilities that you were using before. However, when you switch to your awakening weapon, you can then use all of your awakening abilities. As a sage, my new weapon granted me access to a bunch of ridiculous AoE abilities. Yeah. To be honest, from this point on, I just generally sage played with my awakening weapon. broken. Though I think more long-term players will tell you that the best way to play is to properly switch between your two I weapons love that at skill. opportune moments. 
Making At me level 57, go I unlocked the Valencia quest line, Too which bad to tag events over the desert. PA. While you're in the desert, you will periodically receive debuffs. You either get hypothermia or heat stroke, depending on the time of the day. In which yep. case, you're going to need purified water or star anise tea to get rid of the debuffs. However, I just had a ton of health potions on me at all times, and I would use those to keep myself alive whenever the debuffs were taking damage. During nah, this quest line, I met up again with that water. same giant robot from the tutorial. And also, my black spirit changed appearance. Now he has ancient desert stuff. Cool. I did some more questing, and I checked out Land of the Morning Light, which is one of the newer areas yeah, that was this, added to this the game quest line based was actually on Korean good. folklore. I checked out the lie. Camus Sylvia quest line, which had me take a hot air balloon, Yo, this which apparently acts as another form lines. of semi-fast travel. But at this point, Why I was really beginning to question, right now? what am I doing? What am I working towards? Though you, as the viewer, have the benefit of me already explaining the goals of receiving full Pen Tuvala armor, as well as completing the free seasonal pass, at this point in my playthrough, I actually didn't know about these systems just yet. This is the mm, point when okay. I realized, oh, I should be upgrading my gear yeah. and my accessories. Like For sure, I, I mean, that's the main so point I of So I did BDO. just that, failing time and time again, but ever so slowly getting all my Naru gear and weapons to Pen and converting them into Tuvala. You should have Actually, enough stones. all of my gear just was click Tri it. or Tet Tuvala, except my main weapon, go, which click, I luckily got click, an click, easy click, pen click, 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 just keep now, clicking I on that Now, I still had thing. to work on my accessories. This includes both earrings, both rings, necklace, and belt. But those operate slightly differently oh, than no. your normal Why is he using gear, that as they do stuff? have a chance of being destroyed. You only you want to use the Tuvala accessories, homie. It was at this point that I found out through the seasonal homie. pass, you actually get access to a free pen Tuvala ring and earring. So I quickly caught up on what I should be working towards with my seasonal pass. Now, while There's upgrading your gear, you use a right lot there. of resources known as time-filled blackstones. Luckily for me, I had an absolute plethora of Not these from doing random quests in areas or that the I was in. And even just uh, completing a bunch of the main slot. story quests, you get so, so many of these. So I had more than enough to upgrade my armor and weapons to full pen. Bro. Which was such a good feeling because I had a lot of failures along the way. Hmm. So I had a couple of things yeah, left that nice I needed to, to work succeed. towards in order to get my pen accessories. First and foremost, I had to level up and work on the season pass. Not only would this get me a free ring and earring, but it also grants you access to an item called the Boiling Tides Blackstone, which will guarantee an upgrade from Tet to Pen on yeah, any that's accessory. Dope. After knocking that out, I went and found a blacksmith where you can exchange resources for all pre -tubula Now he's getting into the game. Which is actually what's required in order to upgrade the Tuvula. And this is one of the biggest problems in BDO. I want to make a video about this and talk about this. But right now I'm just going to address it a little bit. You should directly be projected towards this part of the game as soon as you start. Get rid of Naru gear. Put new players directly in the game to where they're enhancing Tuvala gear. Show them how to get Tuvala accessories. Give them enhancement materials that guide them in the correct manner. Like, look at how much trouble this man had just to get to where he's feeling good and starting to get into the game. I mean, this is... It's 31 minutes into this video, and this man's finally getting to enjoy BDO. Look at how much aggravation he had to go through before he could enjoy the game. Accessories. You basically use a base version of the accessory to upgrade it each time. So as you can imagine, you can go through an absolute ton of these. My road was once again met with many, many failures, but eventually, and with a bit of luck, I had every single accessory slot filled and upgraded to pen, except nice. for one. The last Tuvala earring, which I would get from the season pass when I acquired yes, sir. level 60. Yes, I was sir. currently level 58, about halfway to 59, and I decided to head to the grind location known as Polly's Forest. The monsters in this area are all mushrooms, and it's absolutely filled to the brim with packs of these yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, so good. I figured good. maybe in a couple of hours of grinding, I should be level 60 and finished with my full pen Tuvala set. I was a little bit mistaken, though, as a couple of hours later, I had only just acquired level 59. 
I was starting to understand what mm, grinding It doesn't look like he's using his guess. buffs correctly, After doing though. a bit of research, I ended up learning about the experience buffs, which are temporary buffs that you can buy from other players or on the marketplace. How am I so or good, you get dude? Quest rewards or the season pass. Of course, you can also spend real-life money in the pearl shop as well. I think at one Never point I had that. something like 800% more experience gain just from buffs. Yeah. But it was still pretty damn slow. I probably spent in total about six hours grinding here to go well, from level 58 all the way to level. The big problem is you're not at Naga's. Go watch my season video and it'll show you to go to Naga's. It's still relevant. Level 60. But I finally did it. I got to level 60. And with it, the final piece of my pen tuvula earring, which completed my full Hey, set. congrats, on top of that, homie. I also completed the entire season Let's pass, go. And I figured this would be a good point for me to stop. I experienced the full sort of progression loop that a new player would go through when creating a seasonal character. And now, I'll share some of my final thoughts on the game. My expectations going into this game were so completely different from what I actually experienced that I'm also beginning to doubt everything I've heard about gaming in the past. Generally, in any online space, if you talk about BDO, people say it's a pay-to-win, RNG-filled grindfest that will have you paying money out your ass before you experience any semblance Not in of 2024. Gameplay. This couldn't be further from the truth, at least in my limited experience. Does RNG exist and play a massive role in your gears upgrading? Absolutely. Yeah, but you they give you so many to progress in enhancement items. It doesn't matter. Like they throw so much enhancement material at you, as long as you're doing like the weekly quests and everything, and doing the season pass. You have to pay nothing. You shouldn't even have to use your fail stacks. Really, like you can just keep continue to click unlimited enhancement items. I mean. Personally, I feel like they could really just give you one item that you get that allows you to enhance in an unlimited amount of time on seasons. That's not going to hurt nothing. Just give an unlimited uh, Blackstone. BDO, for sure. Are there pay-to-win elements to this game? No doubt about it. But none of that really took anything away from the amount of sheer joy and entertainment that I got out yeah, of this game. Yeah, the game this is right amazing. This is my first time opening the Pearl Shop as a completely free-to-play character that already grinded out all of my seasonal gear to its highest level and is getting somewhat close to graduating to a normal server. Not once while playing did I feel truly compelled to spend any real-life money. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, you can absolutely spend thousands upon thousands of dollars if you so choose to. Heck yeah. But some of the games that I review, I really feel like I'm missing out by not spending a certain threshold of money. And to be honest, I truly expected Black Desert to be the same. As one of the supposedly most notoriously pay-to-win games on the market, to my surprise, it's a that lie. was just not my experience at all. It's a Who lie. knows, in the future and on a normal server, maybe my experience experience with the monetization in Black Desert will change. But if you want to play this game and get a massive amount of enjoyment out of it as a free player, especially in the early game in the first hundred hours or so, that's totally possible. Anyway, like I said in the intro of this video, I feel like I've hardly scratched the surface of this game. I barely touched life skills, I've only played on a seasonal server, and I haven't played with others That's or it. participated in PvP. You barely but touched it. But there is just so much to Black Desert. Agreed. Too many Agreed. times in most modern MMOs, I feel like the destination is always some sort of endgame meta that everyone is following. And while this may be the case in the nope, true endgame so of Black Desert you have so many Desert options in well, there's just so many play. options to play this game how you want Look. to play. If you want to log in and sail around and fish and send workers to specific nodes and make money, I want to do all that. If you want to fishing, log in but... and kill 20,000 monsters while working towards a rare drop or just grinding experience in silver, silver. you can do that too. You the options for really silver. feel quite you endless. Skill for silver. In this Everything's game, and that based around freedom silver. is expressed really, really well in Black Desert. The game is positively massive, and my first impressions were nothing but stellar. I enjoyed this hey, game immensely. Let's go. Should you play Black Desert as a brand new Best player? Best review I've seen so far I would from say a new player. Absolutely. But be prepared to be overwhelmed and have moments where you have no idea what to do. Yeah, and you'll probably something have that to needs watch to be some fixed. videos to catch up and understand everything about this game because it's a game that has depth. Every system is unique and complex and different. It was a truly awesome experience, and if you guys would like to see me make another video on Black Desert in the future where I go even I more see in depth it. on many of the other systems that I left out in this video, please let me know. As always, a massive thanks to everybody who made it to the end of the video. Don't forget a like, a comment, a subscription. Those man, things help a bunch. Good job, and man. And if you really want to support me and my channel, consider becoming a member. Anyways, I'll drop a sub and a like in the next one.
Yeah, really good video, man. Legit, legit video. That was a, a great first impression. I would say that he hit everything, you know, on the head. Like all his points made sense. Things that need to be fixed were really addressed in this video. The super early game progression is straight garbage. They need to improve it, get rid of Naru, get rid of all the enhancement stones, you know, give players pride to Vala as soon as they start, uh, to Vala accessories as soon as they start. You shouldn't have to look for a blacksmith that gives you the accessories that you need. They should be easily available from an early game menu, you know, so... If you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking for more BDO content, make sure you check out one of these other videos right here because you know they're going to be lit.